We've covered some curious Pokémon trainers so far, but Gen 3 is when character designer Ken Sugimori truly surpassed the limits of human imagination. Brendan's original design commits to the usual early Pokémon sins, logic-defying sneakers with ultra-baggy pants tucked into them, unless you are a fisherman wading through the reeds, or a drag queen untuck, you're making a scene. His emerald redesign, uh, <laughs> adds some long shorts over the pants. I guess his thighs were cold, but his calves were just burning up. Very inconsistent weather they got in Hoenn. And now his shoes fit via side flaps, which are not a thing. These do not exist. Now where do we start with the remake? Well, first off, his face looks like someone with a very long arm is working him like a Muppet. Sure, I'd smile too, but there's a time and a place, Brendan. As with Ethan, a backpack and a messenger bag made painful, irreversible love to bring this into the world, and we are left sorting through the consequences. This mega bracelet does not fit his arm. It must be very distracting with how much that would slide around. No 12-year-old boy needs a form-fitting spandex turtleneck. These lines going up to the chest are what anime girls use to highlight their bedonkers, but I don't see no bonkanagahoos on this lad! Athletic shorts this narrow usually aren't this long, but what do I know aside from most things? Uh, you're walking across the country without socks? You are actually going to die and that's your fault! How does this shoe even fit? Does he tighten it by pulling that green strap around the middle? What does the Pokemon world have against laces and Velcro? Real shoes exist, Brendan! You could have worn those! Uh, anything else I'm missing about Brendan's outfit? Like, uh, maybe some kind of spiky, floppy sack hat that looks like old man hair? <laughs> no, that'd be ridiculous! Who would ever even come up with something like that? Make a sprite of that and think, yep, that indeed looks like a hat. That's what this is. That's what I did today. My wife and kids talk to me. May. And tell your servant I like his W neck. Yes! Brawly. No. No, Brawly. No. Looking past Winona's chunky jumpsuit with some unfortunate bagging in an unfortunate area, you can see in the redesign it leaves a mysteriously high boob window, which, like most Hoenn fashion, makes me think, why? In her old design, she wears a choker above it. In her redesign, it's... Uh, I don't know what this is. Th that pointless garment which only exists on anime maids? How does this advance her pilot aesthetic? Juan was not allowed to come back in the remake. He was aiming for Georgian fashion, judging from uh, the coat, the stockings, the shoes, except he's wearing modern shorts over the stockings when he should be wearing breeches tucked into the stockings. This is, at best, an impressionist recreation of a Georgian man. I don't think a human artist could have stuck this closely to the source material, yet mistake the breeches for shorts. Like with Silver's half-hoodie, half-windbreaker Frankenstein from Gen 2, I think we have reasonable evidence to accuse Sugimori of being an artificial intelligence. At least Zania's cool, right? Have you seen her shorts, though? They couldn't just give her normal clothes. She needed the rope, which these shorts were designed to be tied with, despite already having a button anyway. Both ends are on either side of this little tunnel, which means that after she tied the knot, she had to push one of the ends back through here to get it to hang out the other side. Is this why women take so long to get dressed? Just use a belt, Zania! We have an apocalyptic meteor to stop! Over her cloak, she has some kind of dragon scale shoulder pads that go all the way around her back. What is this material made of, and why couldn't this have been a scarf? Once again, this is not a type of garment which exists in the real world, and I have no idea what purpose it serves or how or why she put it on. Ah, and these stockings are shaped like shin guards. I've never seen that before either. And lastly, because we cannot have just shoes in the Pokémon world, these are built with a strap to tighten them above the ankles, but instead of simply going around the collar of the shoe like a reasonable design, it weaves through the shoe, so it can, what, chafe against her leg? Again, I just don't see why we're doing this, Zinnia. You're making life so difficult for yourself! Ugh. I also wanted to call attention to Shelly, if only for this pose. This woman is speed walking to work while telling off the haters and hashtag slaying at Limbo. Girl gets it done! Then there's Matt. The ripped wetsuit seems like his style at first, but the neckline shows that actually it ripped while he was putting it on. And he has not taken it off since. Unfortunately, some of y'all are gonna be into that. This still does not explain his face. Either he made a terrible decision at the tattoo parlor, or a conscious decision to paint his face like this, in which case we must again ask, why? What effect is this going for here? Oh.
Oh, heck no. We haven't done the battle frontier yet. I can't do this in one video. No, no, I'm sorry. I can't do this anymore. I can't keep pretending like this is fine. What is this hat? The 2D artwork is a lumpy bag. This isn't hat hair, this is hair hat. And his 3D model in Pokemon Masters is basically a swimming cap with three tails coming off of it. Cosplay renditions are all over the place and none of them look like hats. This one is Sonic the Hedgehog from the 2D games. This one is Sonic from the 3D games. This is a rudder. You can attach this to the bottom of your ship to improve steering. Ah, join us next time when Pokemon fashion... Uh, oh, um, wow, hello. A am I free tonight? I, I can be.